Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Today we're going to be talking about where do we grow from here? Where do we grow from here? On last week we had three candidates for baptism, which we had baptism last week. And, and after you get saved, after you get born again, what do you do? Where do you grow from here? Well, if you understand the word of God and you understand what God has for you and what he wants you to do, he wants you, and that's why we use the word grow and not go. A lot of people will say, well, where do I go from here? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm here now. This is what I got. Take for an example, when you go to school and you graduate from high school, sometimes you ask the question, where do I go from here? Do I go to college? Do I go in the military? Do I get a job? Do I go through uh, job training somewhere and learn a skill, learn a craft? Where do you go from here? But see, in God's word is where do you grow from here? Because from every station of life, from, from every station of life, when, when you get saved is, is first base. And then after you get saved, is start to walk in obedience of God in his ordinance. On well, last week, there were some of you that got baptized. Now you're walking in his ordinance. You're starting to do the things that you've been instructed to do in the word of God. But God wants you to continue to grow. To continue to grow. Even us that's been saved for a long, long time. Now, now I, I'm not going to ask everybody in the room how long you've been saved. But I, t today is, is August the 28th, 2022. I got saved in June 1981. So I've been saved a little while. But did God want me to stop growing after I get saved and been saved a little while? No. Even me, who, who've been saved a while and now have been called to preach and have been a pastor for, for 10 years now been a pastor and even before that I was a pastor of another church for five years before God pushed, launched me back out into evangelism for a while. And then when he called me to this ministry, we've been here for 10 years now and God still want me to continue to grow from here. Where do I grow from here? The Bible says in 1 Peter, if you have your Bibles, open up your Bibles. And, and, and what I like y'all to do, and I said this before, but it bears reiterating, bring your Bibles to church. Bring a notebook to church. I see some, some of the saints out here have a notebook. And write down the scriptures. Write down even some of the phrases and key things that I say. Why? Because it's going to help you to retain God's word. The Bible says in, 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 in Psalms 119, Lord, I hide your word in my heart so I won't sin against you. For what reason? So I won't sin against you. But to hide his word in your heart, you've got to get his word. First, you've got to receive his word, and then you need to study his word. That's why the Bible says in the book of Timothy that to study to show ourselves approved unto God, that a workman need not be in a shame, rightly divide the word of truth. So it's important that we study the word of God. But where do we grow from here? Are you in 1 Peter chapter 2? 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. It says this, as a newborn babe. Now those who have just recently been saved, you are a baby in Christ. You are newborn in Christ Jesus. But this word is not only for those who just got saved, but this word is for everybody. As a newborn babe, desire. Have a desire, have a hunger, have a craving for what? The milk of the word. So you are able to grow thereby. See, it's what do we desire? Sometimes we desire a lot of different things, but God gives us instructions of what we should be desiring. Because the, here's what the Bible says about desires. The Bible tells us that, that God gives us the desires of our heart. He does? Wow, he does? Well, well, Pastor, you know, I desire a new house. I desire a new car. No, there, there was a stipulation on that. There was a, 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 a I, I use the word stipulation, but there was a prerequisite. He says, if you delight yourself in me, 
I'll give you the desires of your heart. Because if you're delighting yourself in the Lord, then the desires of your heart will be of the Lord. So you have to delight yourself in the Lord for the Lord to give you the desires of your heart. So he said, so as a newborn babe, desire, have a desire. What do you like? What do you desire? What do you, you, you crave to have? What do you crave to have? And we should, you know, where do we grow? He says, desire the sincere milk of the word so you can do what? Grow thereby. So where do we grow from here? We start with the desires of our heart. And the desires of the righteous is only good because the only God is good. And so when we desire God, when we crave the Lord and the things of God, he gives us the desires of our heart. You know, the Bible says in Mark chapter 11, I think it's somewhere around, Verse 24, he says, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Now, now, when you just look at that on face value, we say, well, well God says, uh, whatever I desire, I just, just pray for it. I can have whatever I desire. No. no. He says, when you believe that you receive it by faith, you will have it. But what are you desiring? See, the Bible lets us know, and I said this last week, and I've said it the week before, and I probably said it the week before that, out of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, is that the, the Bible lets us know that when we have faith in God, first he that comes to God must believe that God is, and that he is a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. He's not going to reward well, yeah. Well, I just half-heartedly come to church or half-heartedly praise the Lord, half-heartedly worship Him. Uh, and on my spare time, I'll, I'll do this or, or read His Word or on my, uh, when I feel like it or when I'm in trouble, I'll pray. No! God wants you to diligently so as a newborn babe, where do we grow from here? As a newborn babe, desire the sincere milk of the word so you can grow thereby. The book of Proverbs chapter 2 verse 3 tells us this. It says cry, using that, that baby analogy, it says cry after knowledge. Cry after knowledge. You know like a little baby when they're hungry, especially a newborn baby, when they're hungry, they cry for their food. They cry until you feed them. Or until they either fall asleep or can't cry no more. Don't have no more tears. They all, but they cry for for because they're hungry. As a newborn maid desire the sincere milk of the word. And then in Proverbs, like I said, chapter 2, verse 3, it says, cry after knowledge. Cry for it. I want knowledge so bad want the word of God so bad that you yearn for it and you cry after it. Because that's where we grow from here. I said this before and it bears reiterating and, and, and a lot of things that I'm saying to you today, you heard them before. I'm not saying anything different that you haven't heard from this pulpit before. But I want to put an emphasis on how do we grow? How do I become a better Christian? How do I become even a better person? Because if you're a better Christian, you're a better person. How do I develop in the things of God? Why do you go to college? Why do you go to school? So you can develop in your knowledge. So you can learn. And then you develop as you develop. Then you can be functional and profitable. Job chapter 23 verse 12 Job said this, he says, I esteem, I uphold, I hold more valuable the word of God more than my necessary food. Now, so if we're a newborn baby, we're desiring the milk of the word, and then now Job is saying, God's word should be more valuable, more, uh, more uh, uh, necessary for you to have than the food it takes for you to survive. 
Not the food we eat, because we eat just to eat. I mean, we're eating the chips, we're eating the cookies, we're eating the apple pie, we're eating the barbecue, we're eating the tacos, we're eating, you know, enchiladas, or we're, you know I mean, we're eating just to eat. Man, I want a steak just because I want a steak. I, I want some shrimp with that steak. And we pile it on, and then we sit down, and oh, I couldn't even finish it all. Our belly's sweating because it's all swollen up because we've eaten so much. And then when we don't finish that, we'll, oh, well, uh, I'm going to eat just a little more. Is there some dessert that come with this? We eat just to eat sometimes. Well, why we don't do that in, in the Word? Amen. Eat the Word like that. He said, when we when eat the Word, it, 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 it fills us as though a medicine would. When we eat the Word, when we eat the Word, we need to eat to nourish ourselves. And as Job was saying, I uphold the Word of God more than my necessary food. Because when you really look at it, how much food would it really take for you to survive? You know, the Roman army survived off of a little handful of oatmeal when they went out to the battlefield. They would have a little pouch of oatmeal they would keep in their pouch. And when they wasn't, you know, uh, at, if, if they had raided some place and killed some cattle and all that, when they were out there in the bush, they survived off just eating pinches of oatmeal. Pinches of oatmeal. I've been in the army and, and, and I've been through survival training. Of course, they taught us how, you know, uh, and, and then so many farm boys and, and people that lived in the country, you know how to hunt and fish and all that. But a lot of city kids that joined the military, and if then you went through specialized training like I did, then you would also go through survival training. Now they have a basic survival training that, that you learn and basic training and maybe maybe some of your other skill training. But when you go through certain skill training, especially skill training, you get in a deeper uh, 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 mode of survival. And they teach you how to survive. They teach you how to survive in the wilderness. They teach you how to survive off of things you didn't even know were edible. Just to give you, and even how, how to make, uh, get water out of a leaf off of a tree, or, or get water out of rocks. Pastor, you mean they really do that? Teach you how to get water out of rocks? No, it's not like what Moses did, where he hit the rock or spoke to the rock. No, it's where they teach you how to, how to heat the rock up, and then let the rock cool, and it sweats. And when it sweats, you take the drips apart, and it comes off the rock. And you can survive all that. I didn't know that. There's a lot of stuff you don't know because you haven't experienced it or you haven't been trained in it. And that's just like it is in the Word. There are a lot of things that you don't know that's in the Word that's beneficial for you that you haven't read yet. I lost this one. Amen. Amen. Forgive that pause. I had to switch mics. Amen. But as a newborn babe, desire, desire. And Job said, I esteem, I uphold, I count more valuable the word of God. Is the word of God meaningful and valuable to you? That's a question. Don't answer it for me. But you have to answer it for yourself. Is God's word valuable to you? Because if it is, you, you can't benefit off of something you don't have. But when you get the word of God and you get the word of God in you, Jesus said, if you abide in me and my word is what? His word abides in you. Then you can ask what you will and it will be done. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. The devil came and tempted Jesus when Jesus was in the wilderness fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. And in Matthew chapter 4, the devil said to Jesus after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and the Bible says he was hungry. And the devil said, if you be the son of God, command these stones to be bread, to become bread. And Jesus answered him with these words. 
man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, every what? Word. Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, that comes out of God's mouth. And the words that came out of God's mouth have been penned and written in this Bible so that you can know the will and the word of God for yourself. And this is what you need to live by. Where do we grow from here? Where do we grow? Those of you that are here today, you're here and you're hearing the word and you're receiving the word. But you have to go beyond just hearing it, but applying it to your life on a regular basis, on a daily basis, on an hourly basis, on a minute basis, second by second, you have to apply the word of God. You know, the pastor do it got to be all of that? Yes, all of that. Because you will find that as you, God gives you more and more liberty and as you grow in him and grow in his word and he gives you more and more understanding and life is much better when you're living in the Lord. James 1.22 says, be a doer of the word and not a hearer only, deceiving, tricking, and fooling your own self. Because if you're hearing the word and you're not applying it, you're fooling yourself. Who are you fooling? But God wants you to grow from here. He wants you to grow from here. Ephesians chapter 4. And this is our last verse of scripture. We're going to close. Ephesians chapter 4. But this will give you the purpose of God's word. And the purpose of God's people, such as pastors and teachers and evangelists like myself, to do what? To teach you the word so you can do what? So you can grow. Look what it says in Ephesians chapter 4, and I'll start at verse 11. And it says this, well, verse, verse 10 says, He that descended is Eve is the same that also ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. For what reason, pastor? Why did he give all those people? For your sake and mine. Even your pastor had to have a pastor to become a pastor. Because somebody had to teach me. For what reason? He says here in verse 12, for the perfecting, for the development, in other words, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the building up of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto the perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Why? Verse 14, that we, from here on, the Bible, the King James used the word henceforth, but from here on out, be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. In other words, just everybody's teaching it out there, and there are all kind of so-called gurus and, and religions and all kind of garbage going on out there that people are teaching uh, to, and then the Bible even says that they lay in wait to deceive you. But if you're studying God's word and if you're being taught the word of God by a man or a woman of God who is filled with the spirit of God and who's listening to God and reading God's word who has studied to show themselves approved unto God that they might be a person or a workman who need not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth then as you receiving God's truth because you are sanctified Jesus said in John 17 17 you are sanctified sanctified means set apart sanctified means being cleansed being made right being made holy and being made usable and pliable for God for God's holy use he said sanctify them through your truth and what is truth God's word it's true. 
So when God gives you a gift and, and you come to a church to be fed, to hear the word of God, because God commands the pastor to feed the flock of God. Then you won't be like children tossed around with all kind of foolish teaching, old wise fables, tales, because you'll know the word for yourself as you receive the word. Because for what? Because you're hungry for the word of God. You have a desire for the word of God. So you can grow. So you can grow. So you can be better. So you can develop to be what God wants you to be. because they lie and wait to deceive you at the end of that verse. They lie and wait to deceive you. I said this was going to be the last scripture we close. I made a mistake. The Holy Spirit just said go one more place. Go over to 2 Peter chapter 1 and we're going to close there because God's word also keeps you. It does what? It keeps you. Second Peter, I said chapter one, and then we'll look at one verse in chapter three. But Second Peter chapter one, and look what it says. I'm starting at verse two. It says, "Grace, peace, be multiplied unto you, how through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ. How through the knowledge of God, grace and peace be multiplied unto you." Through the knowledge of God and of, of Jesus Christ. According as his divine power has given unto us all things pertaining to life and godliness. Where? In the word of God. Life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him that have called us unto glory to virtue. Whereby are given unto us exceeding and great and precious promises that... Hereby, and man, you can't even know the promises of God. All the promises are what? Yeah. Yes, and amen. But how are you going to know what the promises are if you don't get in the promise book? You got to get in the promise book and read the promises to know what the promises are. Because you can have a promise and never be able to activate it or, or, or benefit from it. It's like somebody who whose great-grandfather died and they had the reading of the will. But you didn't want to come to the reading. You didn't want to hear it. And because you didn't want to hear it, you missed out on all what grandpa left for you. He might, you might have inherited the whole kit and caboodle. Can I use kit and caboodle? <laughs> Yeah, you might have an inheritance, but God has an inheritance for us. And how do we know what he has for us if we never read the will? you got to read the will to know his will for you to receive the promises he's left for you. Wow. Yes. And all of his promises are his. And he says that we might even have, once again, verse 4, whereby whereby are given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. But beside this, given all diligence, given all what? Yes. Diligence. Man, that word keeps coming up all through the Bible. Diligence. Man, if, remember I told you, if you see something in the Bible at least two or three times, God is serious about it. But what happens when you see something 10 times, 15 times, 20 times in the Bible? Don't you think God is very serious about you understanding what he's talking about? And the word diligence comes up almost in every book of the Bible. God never tells us to half-heartedly seek him. He says, seek him with all diligence, with your whole heart. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. He says once again, verse 5, and, be, and beside this, given all diligence, 
Add to your faith virtue, and to your virtue knowledge, and to your knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if ye do these things, if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall never be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And how many times do we see knowledge in the Bible? In Proverbs alone, you will see that word over a hundred times. Am I correct, brother? I'm sure you are. <laughs> God wants us to get his knowledge. He wants us to receive from him. But we got to grow from here. Where do we grow from here? Because, once again, I said he'll keep you. Listen what it says, the next verse. But he that lack these things is blind and cannot see afar off and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather brethren, give, there's that word again, diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never fall. Do you want to fall from grace? Do you want to go back out in the world? I told y'all before in Embarrassed Reiterate, that backsliding starts with stopping. Backsliding starts with what? Stopping. When you stop reading, when you stop praying, when you stop coming to church, when you stop hearing the word, when you stop seeking God's face, you start to backslide and go backwards instead of forward. Where do we grow from here? We gotta go forward in the Lord. We gotta Seek his face diligently. Seek his word diligently and go forward. Where do we grow from here? As a newborn babe. Desire the sincere milk of the word so you can grow. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory, both now and forever. Amen. Grow in grace. Where do we grow from here? Grow in God's grace. Grow in his love. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we praise you, Lord, and we magnify your name.